see with the Austin Valley Railroad. Uh, we're going to do a little video here of how to and this stuff. And uh, I was, but this is about wiring DC. Some of you guys may not be interested since you're in, most of you I know is in DCC. But uh, a lot of people in this area right here where I live at, uh, DCC is not really that popular. And just about every railroader I know still runs DC. I still run DC on in scale because I have like 60 engines or more and only about five of them are actually DCC with sound. And I was going to show you uh, some I looked for on the, on the internet back before I started this was how to wire up the control panel. Uh, I found a couple videos out there, but most of them, the control panels deal with DC. C and my DC. Uh, I have always used these. Always. Ever since I uh, started Mall Railroad, I used the Atlas selector switches. Uh, they've always worked good. I have no complaint with them. Except for you basically got two power caps. You can run unless you do a little fancy wiring, and then you might get you know another one in there but it's going to cause confusion somewhere down the line so i'm no longer using that that's junk that's from the last layout you might remember uh i since the 90s i've always wanted to do the rotary knob and rotary switch type control panels because back pre-dc you see that's the way a lot of them was fixed up. And when I get to looking on it for it on the internet, and it's just not out there because it's not that popular, I figured there may be a few people out there that's still interested in the DCC or the DC part. So uh, this video, I'm gonna try to not make it very long. Uh, it may end up being long. I don't, I'm not really sure this is a lot involved. Uh, it takes me probably from start to finish, it probably takes me like a month just to wire the control panel, but I don't have a lot of time. I can't sit here and say, well, I work on eight hours a day and it takes me a month. No, I work on an hour or two at night. Sometimes I only get like one six switch soldered up. And uh, and that's, that's kind of frustrating because it takes longer to heat up the soldering iron than it does to actually solder the switch together. I'm not really going to get into the soldering. There's a lot of great videos out there about how to solder. That's I tried to solder for years, and until I got the right equipment and the right tools, uh, I, I really wasn't soldering very good at all. But I watched this one video from Mike Pfeiffer, and I learned a lot from it. So you might check that video out if you have any questions about your soldering, because he really helped me out a lot. I use a lot of his techniques. Some of them, very, very few of them that I don't use, or maybe add a little bit to there that maybe he didn't show. Uh, DJ's trains. I kind of he's got a video that shows how to uh, wire up the switches for the turnouts and stuff. So I used his his ideal on that. And with them two videos and everything, and just talking around to some old school guys from around here that's in the mall railroad business, I was able to come up with what I got. And another little shout out here I want to do. All these switches I bought, I found a great company. I can't remember if it's Steve from Georgia that 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 advertises these or who, but it's these switches I bought all these switches from LED switch. And if you guys need any kind of electrical equipment or anything like like that, look these guys up online at just LED switch. Uh, they have great prices. And that's one of the things that kind of deterred me from building this type of control out before was the prices of all these switches. I've got a lot of rotary switches, a lot of turnout switches and buttons, and I've bought all of it for under probably $80. Uh, it's just amazing the prices that he has, and uh, I, I really want to make a shout out to, I, think, I believe his name is Bob at, uh, at LED Switch. Uh, or is it Bill? Maybe Bill. Is it Bill? Don't look at me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Bill. Maybe Bill. But anyway, he, he's, a great, he's a great guy. I've talked to him on the phone. Uh, he, if you got any questions about his product, he's more than glad to help you out. But if you need some electrical switches, he's got all kinds of things. He's got LED lights, of course, and rotary switches, mini switches, regular switches, 
all kinds of stuff. You can check them out online, LED switch. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you how I built my control panel. I'm sitting here in the cockpit of the new AVR, and uh, that's probably what I call it, a little cockpit. It's probably big enough for me. I don't have a lot of operations with other people, mainly just me operate with. Uh, I've, I've got another guy over at Fort Smith. He's been wanting to do some operating stuff with me when I, when I get it ready. Anyway, uh, let me uh, stop it here and I'll uh, bring you inside the cockpit and kind of show you what's going on. Okay, this is uh, one of my new panels. Uh, this is the first one I built. Of course, with every one, uh, since I'm new at this, uh, it's a learning curve, and yeah, I'm learning as I go. Sorry about the camera being a little wobbly. I just can't get the tripod inside my cockpit. So anyway, uh, this is kind of basically it. It's I've used. Uh, well, I'll show you in a minute how how I did the stripes. Uh, the what I call the main line and the sidings for the main line and what's fed off of the main line will be silver, and you'll see later on after I get it built. Uh, the yard tracks it will be in white these are two yard leads I think I might have showed you in one of the last videos of large yard leads going into the uh, yard um, I'll show you look these are let's see if I can zoom in here these are the rotary switches of course they are a six position switch uh, I can use up to five uh, power packs uh, or cabs, whatever you want to call them, to to power this. And I leave one of them for like an off position. It's a it's a six position switch, but I only use five. So this one position is is on zero. It has no no power at all. And it's cab one, cab two, cab three, cab four, cab Five. Now, cab four and five are DCC. The other ones, cabs one through three, is DC. However, on each and every track, it doesn't matter which track that that have wired. You can use all five of the the power pack cabs to power your track. Uh, these are, of course, the turnout switches. Uh, like I said, I got these from, I got this idea from uh, uh, DJ's trains, and uh, you just on this here, you know, you just flip the switch. That way, I can look at it and know what position uh, the turnout is in. And of course, you know, you can flip the switch, nothing happens until you hit the corresponding button. Which I don't have a power pack on. You probably hear, probably hear it click. There we And that's the reason I used the red buttons. It, it would have been a, a lot less wiring and, and, and probably a little bit cheaper if I used a different switch. But uh, I thought that would be good uh, for me since there's probably not going to be any lights on this for a while. Uh, you know showing me which direction the turnout is thrown I thought this would be a good way for me to uh, just be able to look down and see what position that toggle switch is in and that way I'll know whether to hit the button or not okay there we go and that's basically you know that's that's about all it took like I said uh, I've learned quite a bit of a uh, it's been quite a learning curve for me uh, I've, I've never really attempted anything like this, so this is my first one. It's it's a new one. Uh, it goes all the way down here, and uh, it, it worked. This one here works real well. I wanted to get this one up and test it, and make sure everything was going to work right before I, I built any more. I've got three of these to build. Uh, this one here will be for Harvey and Harvey Junction, and I'll have to have a big one for like the Alex Yard because there's a lot of track in Alex Yard, and and then I'll have another one over here for the Shelby part. These are 
this is all in the construction, so excuse me. This is a, these are my power packs, and, and yeah, these are the old school MRC Tech 2s. Uh, I've had this one here for, oh, probably about 25 years or so. Uh, it still works great. Uh, I have no problems with it at all. Uh, and this is just a, a little 2400 I picked up back then. Uh, at, it works real real well too. It just don't quite have the power that this one has. And this is the newer version of this 2500 that I have. This is the, this is a new one. I just bought it. I've tested it. It works real good. It's got the momentum. I, I try to go for the momentum. And eventually I will replace these two uh, power packs with the new Tech 7 for my DC control. These are these are my three DC uh, cab controls. And then over here, I'm back to using the sound controller 6.0. Uh, I talked to MRC. Uh, th there's a other video that I have recently uh, made here while back that I was kind of angry because I was having a lot of trouble with the throttle on them, the throttle remote, and the rotary dial in it, the rotary switch had gone out. I had two of them, these, both of these, and they both went out about the same time. So I called MRC and I talked to the guy, I don't remember his name, I talked to the guy in the tech department and I, I, I can't say enough for this guy. He 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 was extremely nice. He said, just send them in. Uh, I didn't even send my warranty card in on them. He said, send them in, I'll fix them. Uh, Twelve bucks, fix both of them. So uh, he had them about two or three months and uh, I got them back and they work great. So for 12 bucks, I can't beat it because a new one, a new throttle is like $79, I think, something like that. So yeah, I, I can't beat it. That's kind of what I was looking at was having to buy a new one or two new ones actually. But anyway, uh, that's probably about it here. My next little segment is going to be on how to build this particular uh, style control panel. Like I said, there's a few things that I didn't do on this one that I learned that I should do and I'm applying them to the next uh, uh, well, brain fart uh, my next control pedal uh, and once I do that I've got like I said I've got two more to build and then I'll have this track up and running so uh, if I can get I've got to buy some more rotary switches for Alex Yard here uh, I've got to buy some more turnout switches. I've got a few more of them to buy. And uh, once I do that, I'll have everything I need to uh, wire all this up. Just one thing I kind of, you know, if you're if you're thinking about building something like this as we go in, this is something that I figured out that you got to really think about, uh, is, is when you put them in here, I'm going to have these in like a, here, let me turn around here. They're going to be on each side of me. I'll be sitting like basically facing this way. So I have one on the right, one on the left, one in the center. These are built where the they will open up. Uh, I don't want to open this one right now. We'll get into that later. Uh, they will open up and hang down. This one here in Alex is going to have to be so long that when I if if I don't position it right, I didn't realize this at first, but if I don't position it right. I will not be able to open it and you know it, it'll, it'll be catching on this one it'll be catching on this one so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna move this down offset it where it comes about right here it'll be offset and it'll go all the way over to the corner so when I do that uh, I'm not gonna be able to put the one on Shelby uh, section I'm not going to be able to open it up without moving it down. So I'm going to move it down. Well, I'm so close here, it's hard to focus in. But So it, it'll be sitting right in here, which is still, I can work with it. As long as I've got room to open these control panels up. And so uh, my next few sections that I'll do, uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, showing you kind of how to build the frame, and wh or what I did to build the frame. This is all what I do. You can do whatever you want to, but this is kind of how I did it. Uh, I'll show you how to build a frame and I'll show you the switches and the tools and stuff like that. Like I said, I won't go over how to solder because there's plenty of videos out there on how to do that. But I'll show you basically how uh, everything else that I've done uh, 
is going to work because like I say there's no videos out there on this so uh, all right I'll be right back